Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Uh, as uh, everyone is getting very excited now as the uh, launch for the 1155 boards is rapidly approaching, at this present moment in time it looks like we are going to be buttoned until the uh, 9th of January, but there are a few little rumours that around that you know things might be flicking around a little bit. Uh, we are, we do think that there's going to be an official release at CES, but we're still not 100% sure when we're going to be allowed to put our reviews live yet. As I said, it's looking like it's going to be the 9th, but there's a lot of people talking about the 5th. And anyway, all we know is it's going to be at the beginning of January at the moment. Uh, but more and more manufacturers are starting to um, send in more boards, and they want to get a bit of coverage before uh, Christmas. So. We're going to be taking a quick look round the MSI P67A GD65 today. And uh, you all do moan about that, I spend ages on the box, so I'll bring it back in the light. It's a lovely kind of holographic stroke, pearly looking box. But I'm going to bring you in now and uh, we're going to cut straight into having a good look round the motherboard. Right then guys, what I'm going to do is just start at the top and uh, work my way down, so I'm going to zoom you into the top of the board. You can see the uh, two heat sinks here covering up the MOSFETs. Uh, they, do, they are partially covered, but they do look very similar to the Asus Crystal Design heat sinks. Here you can see the high c caps and the SFC, the um, super ferrite chokes. There's an 8 pin uh, CPU power up in the top left hand corner. This up here is so that you can um, connect little adapters so you can uh, monitor voltages with um, a multimeter off the board so you can get you know find out exactly what's going on. There's quite a few um, power headers for fans. You've got the normal CPU uh, PWM there but then there's quite a few I mean there's four straight away easily accessible around the main component area of the board. People have been getting confused and asking why there's only a dual channel on the 1155s. But that's because the, the 1155s are still going to be aimed at the kind of centre section of the market. It's not beginner but it's not extreme either. It's more the kind of yeah middle of the road. Uh, kind of uh, Intel say it's not, but pretty much 11.55 is going to be replacing 11.56 um, and it has nothing to do with replacing the 13.66 socket at all. Um, there's nothing confirmed, but that's uh, you know going to be coming later on in 2011, maybe beginning of 2012. So Sandy Bridge isn't a replacement for um, 13.66. Uh, as you, uh, something I did uh, notice with this board was I think personally that the uh, RAM is quite close to the CPU socket. This area here for me looks quite messy. I think they could have tidied this up a little bit better and put the 24-pin uh, power towards the outside of the board and moved some of these components about, or even put them on, you know, the components maybe on the other side uh, to get the RAM as far away from the CPU socket as possible so that you have better options for uh, taller RAM and bigger CPU heat sinks. So that kind of section of the board I'm not 100% happy with and it's something that I would probably pick up on in a review as well. But if we move down the board a little bit more, just slide the camera down, we look at the bottom half of the board. As you can see here you've got two uh, PCI Express slots now we don't know whether they're going to be fully fed 16 times lanes yet because we're not allowed to talk about the what's going on with the chipset um, or whether it's uh, for argument's sake there's any extra like uh, chips been put on the board so we can't really talk about that yet. But one thing I can say is they are full length PCI Expresses obviously you can see. Uh, the colours do tell a story um, but something I will say is there's two slots between the uh, PCI Expresses, which is a good thing because if you have a dual slot graphics card that's going to completely cover up this slot which means there's an extra slot in between the dual slot cards 
which will enable your top card to breathe a lot better rather than having the two PCI Expresses back to back and then the, uh, the top card just breathing all the hot air in off the top of your other card so this configuration at least you know, gives you a little bit more room around the cards and allows them to breathe a bit better. If you have a look down on this bottom right hand corner of the board you can see a power, a reset and the overclock genie button. The overclock genie button you pretty much uh, you press it and it will automatically overclock your system. Restarts a couple of times to find the uh, best possible configuration and pretty much overclocks your system for you. Um, that's quite handy for all of those of you out there that um, are not really you know very overclock uh, sort of confident. Um, for the uh, mid-range people out there, that can also give you a good kind of starting point for your overclock to then work on. Um, but uh, hardcore overclockers are pretty much going to ignore this anyway and just go on about their merry way and do it by themselves. What we can see is we've got uh, eight uh, SATA connectors in the back here. And uh, obviously there's uh, two different colours. Um, now I don't know whether this is one on one controller, four on another or two on another one because this is also something to do with the chipset that we're not technically allowed to talk about or anything like that yet. A couple of PCIs, uh, it's quite strange to still see Legacy considering that we've not got any floppy headers or anything like that. Um, I understand some people are still using these for like uh, sound cards and um, for argument's sake uh, Wi-Fi dongles and stuff like that that they have in there but to be quite honest with you I think these need to be completely phased out altogether now and you could have just stuck another PCI Express 1 and a slower lane PCI Express in the bottom or something this is definitely something that I don't particularly agree with but they obviously put it there for a reason uh, I'm going to move the board now and give you a look at the uh, back panel. Right then guys, we can see here that we've still got PS2 keyboard and mouse support. This can be quite helpful um, for people with older stuff. Uh, I do actually seem to find that PS2 keyboard get into the BIOS a lot quicker. It takes a lot less tapping, generally a couple of taps and it's, it's done and dusted. But anyway, that's there for people that are still using those. We have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 USB 2 slots. That's a uh, CMOS clear button, coax uh, audio, then we've got SPDIF audio or digital audio. There is a firewire on the back. That could be quite happy, uh, handy for those of you out there that are going to uh, be thinking about sort of hackintoshing or um, want a faster interface for you know for certain sort of like musical components maybe I know a friend of mine that does uh, music editing is always looking for firewire slots and that would be quite handy got the eSATA at the bottom here one uh, gigabit ethernet slot two USB 3 slots and then the onboard audio so then guys, that's our first look at the MSI P67A GD65. Uh, sorry, do you know what I mean, at the end of the day I am still having to be really cagey about some of the information that I'm allowed to uh, put across, uh, just because of the Intel NDA, but at the end of the day, January really isn't that far away. Uh, we are uh, going to have an awful lot of boards uh, going live, uh, maybe not on uh, launch day because there's just so many we're going to put the big ones live on launch day and then pretty much pummel you with the other boards uh, in rapid concession after um, after the official launch uh, but yeah lo and behold uh, MSI uh, was shouting and they wanted to see their board on OC3D you can see I'll get the table over there do you know what I mean professional to the end but at the end of the day I'm really looking forward to working with all these boards and really seeing what uh, A, Sandy Bridge has to offer, and B, what all these manufacturers bring to the table straight away. Because one of the things uh, that normally happens is uh, stuff gets released, and then it takes the manufacturers a little while to find out um, you know, what works and what they can get away with and what they're doing. So, to be quite honest with you, considering the amount of boards that are about, 
well over a month ahead of release. Um, I'd like to think that they've uh, been working on these for quite a little while. So, I'm not going to bore you to death because at the end of the day it's a motherboard and we can't really talk much more about it than the components. But yes, I'm looking forward to working with all of them and I will endeavour to bring you as many videos on them uh, as possible at the beginning of January. Uh, so, without further ado, I'm going to rack off. This is Tiny Tom Logan with another preview video for you. Out.